Hey curl friends, welcome back to the Present Fills channel. My name is Chloe. If you're new here, please hit that subscribe button so you never miss any of my curly tutorials and tips. Today, you guys, today is my birthday. I turned 30 today. It's kind of crazy. I feel like there's a lot in society that's like, okay, 30 years, right? It's a big one. And I've been feeling it, but I also have been super excited for my 30th because I've kind of felt like where I'm at in my life, I'm kind of like already like in my 30s. Like I'm like, I'm kind of over like the party scene. I'm over a lot of those things. I'm here for like business building and like nights in with my husband and like all those things. So I just kind of feel like I already like settled into my 30s before I was even 30. But today, with it being my 30th birthday, I wanted to do something special for you guys. So I wanted to share 30 hair and beauty tips that I've learned over my 30 years of life. And with that, I also wanted to partner with one of my favorite brands that I found over five years ago, which is Carl Smith. Popping them up here, you're probably already very familiar with them if you have been on my channel for a little bit. They're one of my all-time faves. So with that being said, let's get to it. The first tip today, if your hair feels dry, it is, and that means you probably need more leave-in, okay? Sometimes we tend to be a little light-handed with products. I know sometimes it can be a little expensive. I know I used to be a lot more light-handed with my styling products, especially my conditioners. If your hair is thick and dry and kind of coarse naturally, we want to bring on all that moisture. So the key there is bringing in more leave-in conditioner. If you need a recommendation, I'm gonna pop this one right up here, it is the oil and cream from Curl Smith. This is one of my all-time favorites and it has been since I found it probably about five or six years ago And I still use it all the time. So definitely definitely try this if you haven't already Any products and anything that I talk about today I will have it of course linked down in the description So make sure you check that out if you haven't yet tip number two is curl cocktailing. Now I know some people like to do just like one product in and out done. I am a huge fan of curl cocktailing. I used to do like one styler and that was it and that was probably one of my biggest issues now looking back at it. So I want you to try this. If you have a similar texture to mine, I want you to try stacking and curl cocktailing these. I'm going to try putting in a leave-in a curl cream, and then a gel or a mousse, okay? So that's gonna be your hold, and then the curl cream and your leave-in, that's gonna be your hydration. Curl cream is kind of a little mix of in between. And you'll start to figure out what works best for you, but I promise that mix, and then if you need a little extra hydration, add a little oil in there, and it's going to work beautifully. I'm going to add in one of my favorite curl cocktails from Curl Smith right here. Make sure you screenshot it, write it down, whatever you need to do. I'll also put it down in the description so you guys can check that out as well. Any of the Curl Smith products too that I talk about, I do have a code for, so popping that up here as well, and that's gonna be down in the description too. Tip number three, do not just co-wash. Co-washing can be great, it's very hydrating but it doesn't get rid of buildup. And one of the most important things with curly hair is we want it to feel really nice and light and weightless so that our curls don't get like, you know, really drawn out. So having that clarifier or a general just gentle shampoo is super important to include in your routine. I would say I would use like a co-wash once or twice a month and then use those other ones intermittently as well. It all depends on how often you wash. Now tip number four goes hand in hand with tip number three. I love a good clarifier, okay? Clarifying is really important not only to keep your strands really nice and weightless, but also to make sure your scalp stays super healthy. I have seborrheic dermatitis. If you're not familiar with this, I did talk about that in a recent video. So I will pop that up here for you guys if you haven't watched that before. That video, I talk a lot about this product and this is gonna be my fourth tip. You need a good gentle clarifier. It doesn't need to be super intense and that's one of the reasons why I like this because it adds a little bit of clarifying but it also adds a little bit of a scrub. So this is your wash and scrub. I love this. I could not recommend this more to anybody and everybody. So, so good. 
So tip number six, this is all about skincare. If we want to talk about beauty, skincare is really, really important, way more honestly than makeup, mainly because skincare is where we start. If we don't start out with good skincare and good prep skin, that is our canvas. If we do not start with that, then our makeup is already going to be not as great as we want it to be. So we need good skincare for anti-aging, right? Let me share a few of my favorite skincare pieces that I have really, really grown to love. The first piece of taking care of your skin is also making sure that you're removing any excess makeup. So these are your best lazy girlfriend, okay? This is from Makeup Eraser. I love the individual ones because you literally take your makeup off, pop it in the laundry, it cleans up, it's good to go again, it's really much a lot better for the environment than using a throwaway one, and it's just my all-time favorite. It does a fantastic job of taking off all your makeup, and then your skin is really nice and prepped and ready to do the rest of your skincare routine. It's also perfect for travel. I literally just pack like six or seven of these with me, one for every day, easy peasy, barely takes up any space in my suitcase. So good. Now, you're not done with cleansing your face just with a makeup eraser. So your tip number eight is to have a really good, just gentle face wash, okay? One of my all-time favorites is Tula. I'm popping it up here. I love the Tula face wash. It is just a good, overall, gentle, favorite of mine. I also used to use the Tatcha one, but it has a little bit of scrubbies in it. It's still gentle, but it's still a little bit more abrasive than the Tula one. So my number one that I recommend is Tula. And if you want a little bit more of a gentle exfoliation on a daily basis, then you could use the one from Tatcha. Now, tip number nine, pro tip here. This is something I've learned over the years, and I don't know why I don't see more people do this, but when you're washing your face, okay, so say you're using that cleanser and you're washing it, right? A lot of people will just stick their face into the sink and just splash water to get it off. To me, I'm like, well, you're still gonna have like some residual there. You're also making a huge mess when you're washing your face like that. So my recommendation is to take a little water, mix it with your face wash, and gently go around, right, with your, fa with your fingertips, and then take a clean face towel and wet that down really well, and then wipe all that excess off. You will find that you have a lot of left makeup that's still there residually that's just like been around your hairline or in just like little crevices that you may not have gotten with this or that you may not have quite scrubbed off or that your wash could have gotten. So I highly recommend trying that and it will make a heck of a lot less mess. Now tip number 10 is about exfoliating. There are two main types of exfoliators for your skin. You can do a physical exfoliator, which is normally those little grainy pieces, right, that you're putting around your skin and you feel that abrasion. The other type is an acid-based exfoliator. I have personally found over the past year or two, as my skin is getting a little bit older, I am finding that an acid-based exfoliator on a daily basis does a much better job than a physical exfoliator. Number one, I think it's a little less intense for someone who has sensitive skin. Number two, I think it does a better job than doing a once or twice a week physical exfoliator and doing an everyday AHA or BHA exfoliator that way. I'm gonna show you my two, uh, my three favorite ones. Number one is Paula's Choice BHA 2% Exfoliator Liquid. This you can either put on a cotton pad or you can just pop it onto your fingers and put it on that way. This is gonna be directly after you washed your face, all right? It is incredible. I could not recommend this enough. And I've been using this for at least a year and it is incredible. Now, one that I started using about three or four months ago that I also really love is the Glow Recipe PHA and BHA Watermelon glow toner, okay? It says that it pore tightens, and I do think that a little bit. I think that this one does that as well. I think this one might do it a little bit better, but I love this as a prep before my makeup. This I'll use morning and night, but this one I like to use just in the morning. Works beautifully. Now, the other one I wanna talk about is this one right here, which is an AHA resurfacing night serum. This is from Pharmacy, all right? 
and it is so, so good. These I think are more gentle. This one, because it is a night one, it's gonna be a little bit more intense. So if you have super sensitive skin, you might wanna forego this, but if you want something that does a little bit more work, this is bomb. Plus it's a serum, so it adds a little bit of a hydration as well. This one's a little bit more hydrating for daytime. This one's a little more hydrating for evening. All are incredible options, but if you want one that's like an all around, then I'm gonna recommend this one. Tip number 11 is moisturizing, okay? Moisturizing is super important for our skin to stay nice and healthy, especially after we've maybe put an acid exfoliator on, if we've really washed our face, it probably is gonna feel a little dry. So moisturizing is gonna be super important to your routine. In the past, I would say five or six months, I found First Aid Beauty, and y'all, First Aid Beauty is Clutch, especially for a girl who's got some sensitive skin. This right here is a new one. It's from their Ultra Repair line, but this one has collagen infused in it, and I love it for the face. This is it's super hydrating. It just feels really good on the skin morning and night. You can use it both ways, and it is also really light on the fragrance, if any fragrance at all. Now, if you're looking for something that is going to be an all around good for face and body, like truly all in one, I'm gonna recommend the Ultra Repair Intense Hydration Cream also from there. Like I said, these are art within the same kind of line. This one I really like because number one, it is allergy tested. It is also fragrance free and it's all around good for your entire body. So like if I have a sunburn on my face, on my body, I use this because it does such a great job. It also helps with just overly dry skin. So if you have eczema or anything along those lines, this is probably gonna be a really good option for you. Now, along with moisturizing, we need an SPF after the moisturizer. Now I love, I've been using this for about a year and I, I think this is my third bottle. I cannot get enough of it. This is the Tula Protect and Glow Face Sunscreen. It has an SPF of 30, protects against UVA and UVB rays. It is a gel-based sunscreen, and it has a little bit of shimmer almost in it, but it's not like sparkly. This is basically what it looks like, and when you put it on, it just has this beautiful glow about it. It doesn't create like a white cast or anything, and it acts as a primer as well, so it's a two in one. So normally when I'm using this, which is pretty much every day, I do not use a primer to prep my skin for makeup. I just use this as an all-in-one SPF plus primer, and I even will bring this on with me on vacation, to the beach, or on the lake, and it works beautifully. Now, as we're kind of going through what a day-to-day -day routine would look like, it's really important that we talk about the makeup and making sure that we're not covering up our natural beauty, okay? In my opinion, when we are doing makeup, I want to bring out my natural beauty. That doesn't mean that you can't use makeup or that you can't use false lashes because those can enhance some of our natural beauty. Like for me, I love my eyes. My eyes are big, so I love adding lashes to really intensify that. I also love my skin, okay? Because I do take very good care of it, I want it to show through. And also when you add on a ton of layered makeup on makeup on makeup, it starts to look so fake and like, where is your natural skin, okay? So I like to have a really nice natural glow about myself. So I choose to use something like a CC cream or a lighter, more hydrating foundation that then I can go in and add like a little bit of concealer if I have any, you know, imperfections that I wanna cover, but then I'm still letting a lot of my natural skin show through when I'm still wearing makeup. I personally think that is the best way that you can show your natural skin and your natural beauty while also enhancing those features. One of my all-time favorites is from Fenty Beauty. This one launched actually not too long ago. It's their Easy Drops. Super, super lightweight. It is incredible, so lightweight, but just really lets your natural skin show through. 
Now, along with letting that natural dewy skin come through, I love some good cream products. So that means using a cream contour, a cream highlighter, a cream blush, those kind of things really look like they're melted into your skin so that it just looks more natural rather than powdery and caked on. I'm not gonna bring them up here, but I will add a few of my favorites down in the description. Now, you may be asking, okay, yes, I understand you like dewy, you like flowy, but at the same time, I don't want my makeup falling off, right? So yes, you do still need to set your makeup. Some of that comes with having the primer, and then another part of that comes with adding a little bit of powder. I highly recommend not going too intense with your powder. Number one, it can add too much like underneath your eyes where it can start to look cakey and then it can also like start creasing. So I like to use a light amount of powder. One of my favorite ones is this one right here from Charlotte Tilbury. It's their airbrush flawless finish one. It just looks really natural on the skin and I feel like I need very little of it actually. And what I recommend doing is just setting those under eyes with a light amount of powder and a little bit in your T-zone and call it a day. Now, if you're going to go through like a, a huge photo shoot or you're gonna go out for the day and you know you're gonna be like sweating a ton, okay, add a little bit more. But for your day to day, you really do not need a ton of powder. Now, let's get back into the hair care side. Detangling is really important and I've found that detangling multiple times throughout my routine is actually more important than I ever realized before. Step one of detangling is I detangle in the shower with my fingers and a deep conditioner or conditioner. That gets those initial tangles from the week or from your last wash really out and keeps your hair nice and moisturized. Step two is detangling with a brush. Now, I personally love this brush right here. Excuse the hair that's in it. This is the Tangle Teaser. If you are not new to my channel, you probably heard me talk about this many a times. Once I put in my cream products, I'll detangle with this, and that helps just get everything, not only the products really well distributed, but it also helps make sure I get any extra snarls from applying my products from the shower to then. Then my last tip for detangling is when you are actually doing your styling. So whether you're using a Din Man brush or you're using this or your finger, finger coiling, and if you're new to my finger coiling, make sure you watch this whole tutorial up here that gives you everything you need to know about my detangling and my styling process. I like to go into a section and actually fully stretch out and really detangle that section so that I get a super nice and defined curl that is going to be as resistant to frizz and tangles as possible until my next wash. Tip number 17 is I would recommend diffusing over air drying. I air dried for years, all right? And those were not, I would not consider those my best hair years, okay? Not only was my hair more tangled, but it also was a lot l more stretched out. Some people like a more stretched out curl. I personally like mine to be a little bit more bouncy and a little bit more shrinkage. If you want some of my diffusing tips, I will also link that above. There are many tutorials that I've already done and tips and tricks that I have shown on this channel that give you a lot more in depth if you wanna go in depth on more of these topics. Now, if you want my diffuser recommendation, I do highly, highly recommend my Dyson, okay? This Dyson is a game changer. Now, let me preface this though, because I do think the Dyson is a game changer for my curlies who have thick hair or long hair. So if your hair takes a long time to dry, I fully believe that the Dyson is worth your money. However, if you have a finer texture or if you find that your hair dries super fast, it might not be as much worth the money because it is a very expensive dryer. It took my dry time from like an hour to about 20 to 30 minutes, which was a huge game changer for me in my curl journey. Now, tip number 19, scrunchies. Silk scrunchies, okay? I am a huge lover of silk scrunchies. Number one, because I have not had a single silk scrunchie pop on me, okay? I think every single curly knows the feeling of they put that hair tie around their hair and then they get the pop. And they're like, crap. 
That will not happen with a silk scrunchie. These are some of my favorite ones. They're from Slip Silk. This is one of the size, this is the large size, this is the skinnier size. They're both fantastic. If you have super thick hair, you'll probably really enjoy this one. And I may have something in the works for you guys later this year, so please stay tuned for that. I have something being designed that I'm super excited about for you guys that may have something to do with this. All right, all right. Tip number 20. Yes, we're on a tip number 20 out of 30. We are moving right along, doing great. Okay, this is gonna have to do with ingredients. Ingredients for your hair care products are super important. Honestly, ingredients are super important all around, but we're gonna talk about hair care for this one. It's really important to pay attention to where ingredients are in the lineup, okay? So the higher that the ingredients are on that ingredient list, the more that that ingredient is being used within the product. The lower it is on the ingredient list, the less percentage it is being used on the product. Now, another tip along with this, I personally like to look for ingredients that are super high on the list in moisture, and then kind of low to medium on the list when it comes to protein. Sometimes when I have too much protein too high in the ingredient list and all my products have that much protein in them, I feel really dry and brittle, which is a direct sign of protein overload. Tip number 22. When you go to the salon, if you are gonna be doing any sort of highlighting or coloring, I want you to think of this. One hour in the salon is gonna equal about one additional hour that you're gonna to need to spend on your hair maintenance wise per month, all right? So when I'm at the salon, I normally spend about th two to three hours of additional time doing the color processing. When it comes to highlighting or low lighting, anything along those lines, I know that that's gonna equate to about that much more time per month on my hair that I need to do in deep conditioning treatments and bonding treatments. So normally I spend about an hour to two hours of additional bonding treatments on my hair per month. And then I'll normally spend about one to two hours also of additional time in deep conditioning per month. So before you go to the salon and you say, I want highlights, I want you to also think how much maintenance do I want to do on my hair per month? That's extra time out of my day or my week on my curls. If you're fine with that, amazing. But if you know that you are strapped for time and you don't wanna have to do that, but you also wanna keep your curls intact, think about that before you go get highlights. If you need some recommendations on those bonding or deep conditioning treatments, I highly recommend the Bond Curl. That is phenomenal. It is a clutch product. I'm on my like third bottle. I could not recommend that enough. And if you need a good deep conditioning treatment, I love, they actually have two, so it depends on kind of what you want that I would really recommend. The one is the Double Cream Deep Quencher. So good for extra hydration. Or if you want something with hydration and with protein, I'm gonna recommend this one because it is kind of an all-in-one. You can use it as a conditioner, a deep conditioner, a leave-in, you name it, you can use it. So it's really phenomenal to add that extra protein if you feel like your hair is needing that. Tip number 23 is know your humectants. Humectants are something that's really important in the hair care industry because it adds extra hydration. It's actually pulling extra hydration from the air and into your hair follicle. But what you need to keep in mind is if you have super high porosity hair, like I do, and then you're also in a really humid or high dew point climate, you are then going to bring all that humidity into your curls because you have a lot of humectants in your products. So if you have high porosity hair and do live in that high humidity climate, I want you to keep your humectants a little bit lower on the scale, especially in your stylers. Now tip 24 is gonna go directly with this and I want to show you all the humectants that overall you need to keep your eye out. So you're gonna wanna keep track of glycerin, sorbitol, sugars, okay? Like erythritol or glucose, any of those kind of things. Those are also going to be humectants. Your hydrolyzed protein, there are a lot of those as well. So keep, in, keep those in mind too, that those are technically considered humectants. 
Now, with all of these beauty tips, okay, a lot of these that I'm talking about are very external, right? Beauty is not only skin deep, okay, right? We do a lot of things. I focus a lot on external beauty, but internal beauty, honestly, is almost even more important in my opinion. So one of the things that I have found over the years is that it is so, so important to your beauty routine to maintain who you naturally are, okay? So that means if you have curls, embrace those natural curls. But if you like to straighten your hair, then by all means, straighten that hair, girl. And if you like to wear bright colors, but other people are like, ooh, she's like, she was like, wears a lot of colors. I don't care, I don't care. Then wear those bright colors. I want you to stay true to who you are because you are the only person that is you. You're the only you that is out there and that is precious and that is rare. And I want you to remember that because if you try to please everybody else, you will never be truly happy with you. Now, the next tip that goes really hand in hand with this is that I don't want you to let people choose for you, all right? I have learned a lot about this over the past handful of years and that I let a lot of people persuade me to do or not to pursue certain things that maybe internally I was like, you know what, that doesn't doesn't feel right, it doesn't align, and I want you to remember that what, uh, what feels right and what aligns with you is what's right for you. So I want you to listen to your gut. And if those people don't like it, then they're not the right people for you. If they don't like who you truly are, then you don't want those people in your life, in my opinion. You want people who bring you up and who really just emphasize who you truly and naturally are. Am I doing this for me or am I doing this to please somebody else? I put on lashes because they make me happy. I do my curly hair because it makes me happy. I, you know, I do these things and I dress a certain way. I do the things that I like to do because they make me happy. And I want you to remember that too because when you are truly internally happy, it exudes that. And that goes right with my next tip is that confidence, internal confidence is what really lets out this internal beauty. So if you feel internally confident and you put that onto the world, girl, you're gonna be doing something right, I promise. For me, one of the things that I was very self-conscious about for many years was the lines, because I've got a very, I'm very expressive. I'm very expressive with my eyebrows, my forehead, my face. Like every time anybody takes a picture of me, like, you know, like the behind the scenes, I'm always like, ah, like I'm always making the weirdest faces because I'm super, super like emotionally like out there. And so because of that and knowing that my, on my parents' side, like expressive forehead lines were, are really prevalent. And it always bothered me, even from the time I was like 16 years old, it bothered me that I had these like really expressive forehead lines. And throughout my 20s, they started just like not going away. And I was like, these are showing up in pictures and it's really annoying and I really, like it made me feel self-conscious. And I had a lot of people tell me, oh, don't worry about that, you're beautiful. Like you don't need to worry about that, nobody sees it. But I let those people tell me what I should do with my face and my body. I didn't do Botox for anybody else. I did it for me and I started doing it about three and a half years ago and I never looked back. I love my Botox. And so if there's anything that you feel like you love or that you wanna do because it makes you happy, by all means, that's what you should do. And our last tip, tip 30, is that I want you to pay attention a little less to advertising and a little more of what you truly love, okay? When you find a brand or a product that you genuinely are like, this is one of the best things I've ever tried, I want you to hold on to that and not feel like, oh, but I need to try this next best thing that just, you know, launched or that just came out or that, you know, so-and-so is telling me even though I love this and they're supposed to do the same thing. I want you to keep at with some of the things that you truly love or if you find a brand that you feel like, you know, aligns with you so well, stick with a brand that you love. That's one of the reasons why I'm partnering with Curlsmith on this video because they are one that I have come back to time and time and time again over the years 
because I love not only the products because they do so well on my hair, but because the people behind the brand are so incredible and I just love their mission and I love what they're doing for the curly community. They're just an incredible brand. And so that's why I go back to them time and time again. I think I hounded them again and again and again via email to work with them until they finally would work with me because I love them so much. And if you find a brand that you love like that, stick to it, man. And guys, that is the 30 tips, 30 hair and beauty tips of my 30 years and I hope that you at least got a handful of these that really sunk in for you. And please, before you go to, please give this video a thumbs up. I really appreciate it when you do that. And if you are new and you haven't subscribed yet before, please hit that subscribe button as well. And thank you to Curlsmith again for sponsoring this video. As I said before, I absolutely love them end to end. And until next time, guys, I will see you then. Bye.